welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews. I'm Judith and today you are watching another review here on the channel. After all of these weeks, all of these weeks of talking about it, I'm finally reviewing Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. Do, 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 do. I don't have intro music. I don't know why I did an intro music dance. I've been talking about wanting to review this basically since the moment I read it. If you have been around for a while, you'll know I usually try and film dedicated review videos for everything that gets a five star review from me. I'm not always the best at it. I haven't actually looked at my five star reviews this year to see if I've had any others. I can't quite remember, but this is absolutely one and it's finally time. I'm going to get to it. Some quick disclaimers before we start. Um, I did receive a free digital review copy of this book, but I bought this physical copy myself. Regardless of where books come from, nobody's paying me to talk about books unless you're a patron. Thank you so much. And regardless, all opinions are my own. I'm also going to keep this as spoiler free as humanly possible. If you do want to go into this book knowing absolutely nothing, click away now because I'm going to talk about like what the plot is just not gonna spoil anything for you. And lastly, there are some content warnings that apply to this book, particularly around uh, negative relationships. That's probably the kindest way of putting it. I would say it's probably a bit more extreme than that. Therefore, I will link the story graph for the book below and you can check out the content warnings there because that is the easiest way of doing it. I haven't scripted this, so you're getting ready for usual Judith waffle, but I do only have 18 minutes on my memory card. So we'll see how far we get. This book came out in 2022, just in case you're watching this in the future. And it is the latest T. Kingfisher book. We don't often get T. Kingfisher books on the shelves in bookshops in the UK. I don't know why. I think because a lot of stuff is published by more niche presses, so it doesn't always make its way onto like big commercial UK bookshops. Um, however, this is published by Titan here in the UK and it's got a lovely snazzy cover on it. Do I think the cover should have had gold foil? Yes. Yes, I do. I think they missed a trick not putting gold foil on this, but it is what's inside the book that counts. So I'll allow it. This is the US cover if you're interested. Uh, if you're wanting to find it elsewhere, this is what that looks like. And the under jacket is absolutely stunning. Angela has a copy and I'm most envious. But again, we're here to talk about what's on the inside. T. Kingfisher, if you don't know, is an author who has written all sorts of books under both the name T. Kingfisher and some other pen names, including Ursula Vernon. I've never read an Ursula Vernon book, but I've read a lot of T. Kingfisher, uh, including the Clock Tour series, The Twelfth Bride, Brian and Roses, which was one of my favourite books of 2020. Uh, loads and loads of stuff. A lot of this stuff is on Scribd. As ever, I'm not paid to promote Scribd, but if you would like to join, I get a little bit of a kickback from it and I'll link it below because a lot of, a lot of it is on Scribd. I've loved every single thing that they've written that I've ever read. I think probably to the point where she is one of my favourite authors, which I wasn't necessarily expecting, but yeah, the point where you've read maybe six or seven things and loved all of them, that might be the way it goes. Um, what I really like is that, that she tends to write shorter books uh, and they all almost always stand alone really nicely and uh, just these wonderful, slightly weird settings. There's an element of darkness there, but it's usually a really fulfilling and empowering story. And this is no exception. Let me read you from the blurb. This isn't the fairy tale where the princess marries a prince. It's the one where she kills him. After years of seeing her sister suffer at the hands of an abusive prince, Mara, the shy convent raised third born daughter has finally realized that no one is coming to their rescue. No one except for Mara herself. Seeking help from a powerful grave witch, Mara is offered the tools to kill a prince if she can complete three impossible tasks. But as is the way in tales of princes, witches and daughters, the impossible is only the beginning. On her quest, Mara is joined by the grave witch, a reluctant fairy godmother, a strapping former knight and a chicken possessed by a demon. Together, the five of them intend to be the hand that closes around the throat of the prince and frees Mara's family and their kingdom from its tyrannous ruler at last. So yes, uh, it is a fairy tale inspired, but it's not a retelling of any particular fairy tale. It's just drawing on fairy tale elements elements. Kind of let's go kill a prince story. It's questing, it's sort of found family, it's basically everything I ever want and it just has that little element of kind of darkness but in a kind of more leaning to just towards bones and graves as an aesthetic rather than let's get into, you know, I don't know why my brain went to it. But I can't say that on YouTube. The horror of the book is not in the grave stuff. The horror of the book is how terrible the prince is. So yes, I think that's probably my favourite thing about the story is that kind of aesthetic that it has, that fairy tale, but also bones and teeth. So Bone Dog is my favourite character in this. It is a dog that Mara creates as one of the tasks. It's right at the start of the book. That's not a spoiler. She builds up Bone Dog and he's then a companion for the rest of the journey. And as you will know, I love dogs so much. Uh, my own dog is staring at me right now. She's kind of falling asleep, but she's just keeping guard on me just a little bit. And yes, I'm a sucker for an animal companion. I talked about that in a recent video. I just love, love Bone Dog, love the chicken as well, animal companions, it's a great time. But the fact that there is this like happy little animal companion, but it's made of bones is just the right line to walk for this story. There's a grave witch, but she's just incredibly competent and a little bit snarky. I love her. Uh, and the idea of grave witches, um, 
living in graveyards and all places having grave witches and there's a whole thing about godmothers as well that comes into play and again it's just those fairy tale elements slightly twisted which I love. I think this book also does a really good job of being a story set in a world where women are somewhat downtrodden. Uh, it is still a patriarchal society and yes bad things are happening to Mara's sisters who keep being married off to the same prince and it is not a positive experience shall we say. And Mara herself is you know sent off to live in a convent because she's the third sister so she has to be kept in reserve you know. It's not a nice experience for women but the story itself manages to be empowering and it's something that happens in a number of T. Kingfisher books that I've noticed. Um, I think that The Twelfth Bride does a really good job of it as well where you still completely comprehend how awful the situation is and how terrible it is but the story as a whole is empowering. The story as a whole is a positive experience, especially for the characters, and it's a lot of women lifting each other up and and helping one another. Whereas some other books that I've read, naming no names, just feel kind of miserable, and I don't love that. So, whereas I think T. Kingfisher strikes that balance really, really well. I've mentioned Bone Dog, I've mentioned The Grave Witch, all of the characters in this story are really, really great. Uh, it's a really interesting mix of people, it's a really nice kind of found family questing party story. It reminds me a lot of the Clock Tour series in the kind of different people being gathered together, some of whom know each other, some of whom are cross with each other, and just how they solve problems and make it to the next stage of the story. It works really well. I think this would appeal to people who like d, &D kind of content where it is, as I say, a questing party trying to do a thing and sometimes causing chaos. Always appreciated. Throw in a demonic chicken and you've got a great time. I had the best time with this book. I think it flows wonderfully as a story. It's a really nice contained fairy tale style story. It's not a fairy tale, but it is that style. It it just was incredibly satisfying to read to the point where I'd been reading a lot of fairly mediocre things around about the same time and I was reading this and I had to message a friend just saying this is what a good book is I thought I'd forgotten I thought I'd lost what good books are and I was never going to read a good book again but this this did it for me it just went oh good writing I found it. Um, I think this would work a really good crossover book if you're someone who likes YA but if you're someone who doesn't like YA at all it's not gonna it's not drawing from YA, I just think it would be a good place to go if you like that kind of story. It's adult fiction, it's just, just fantastic. If I'm being incredibly nitpicky and it wasn't enough to knock off a star, this was still gut feeling a five star read for me. I didn't love the romance, but I think that's because it's such a short book, there isn't really the time to develop that. But it didn't bother me that it was there, it was just one of those things where I was like, ah, I could have done without that. I could have got through the story and not had that and I would have been fine. And there are much worse books that do that with sort of lift outable romance, so I'm not going to complain too much. I'm just, for the sake of a complete review, nitpicking to the utmost, didn't love the romance. If you wanted to find similar things, I think Bear and the Nightingale actually does read fairly similar in a lot of different elements and is another book that manages that, oh it sucks to be a woman, but empowering things are happening for you and I like that. The other thing I thought of if you want a, a similarly angry bird is Fly By Night by Frances Harding has an angry goose in it. That's always a good time. I do have a whole video up on animal companions or books with animal companions, creature companions, if you'd like to look at some more recommendations that I think would lean similar, but to be honest, I think just read T. Kingfisher's back catalogue. Clock Tour is probably the one that felt most similar to me, but also if you want more of the fairy tale element, her retelling of Beauty and the Beast, Briny and Roses is one of my favourite books of all time. It's so fantastic. I definitely recommend. So yes, after all this time, basically my instructions are yes, go and read this, especially if you're a person who likes fairy tales but is a little bit burned out on retellings. If retellings are not your jam and you want something fresh, Nettle and Bone. Have you read this? Do you have plans to? Are you picking up a copy? Let me know. Also, if you like the UK cover or the US cover more. While you're down there commenting, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated. Though nothing makes me feel more loved and appreciated than my patrons over on Patreon who support the channel and make videos like this possible. If you would like to get exclusive access to bonus content and early access to videos, you can check that out down in the description, along with my social media, which you can follow if you like. My Discord, which you can come along to for chill chats about books and so such, crafting, uh, other things. It's all on there. Pets, dogs who are not made of bone. Well, they got some bone, but it's not. You know what I mean. I should stop talking. Thank you so much for watching. That's all from me, and I will see you in the next one. It's gonna be some bloopers now. Yes, I've been talking about wanting to rip them. If I think it's a pseudo If I've remembered that wrong, I'm a terrible person.